Head up! Two weeks ago, we began the most ambitious social experiment since My Fair Lady. We reopened an old-fashioned ladies' finishing school to re-educate ten of Britain's most notorious ladettes. It's not funny. They thought it would be one big party. <laughs> but now they've learnt that this regime is no joke. There is absolutely no hope. And four of the ladettes have already been expelled. This week, the girls are invited to a grand country house weekend. It's a minefield of complicated etiquette. First, they need to look the part. Then they'll have to learn how to behave. What we're going to talk about is sexual etiquette. For some, it will be an opportunity to shine, while for others, it will end in disgrace. You lucky, lucky girls, you're both to them be brown. And yet another girl will have to leave Eggleston Hall. What do we get? Thrown back at us? Failure. week of term at Eggleston Hall Finishing School. At breakfast, the girls discover an invitation. Delighted if you could join us for black tie dinner and overnight stay at our home on Friday the 9th of April. <laughs> Preparing for a formal country house weekend is the biggest challenge the Ladettes have faced so far. Hang on, hang on, we're going overnight stay. We've got to be on best behaviour from 4pm till the next morning. <laughs> And I tell you what, I think if you get hammered and anything, I think that'll be it. Hello, nice to see you. Good to see you. Hello, how are you? Whether they can behave like ladies remains to be seen, but at least they can look the part. And Principal Jean Broke Smith has invited Stephen Way and his team of hairdressers to give the ladettes the classic debutante look. We want to tame you a little bit. Right. So all this sort of London sort of, you know, like, let's be funky stuff. It's got to go. Yeah, because you need to be more elegant. Okay. Elegance is a new concept for Rachel Carter Eagleton. Well, if there's men in the room, I'd usually start curving. And I just forget where I am and how I need to act. She's been sent to finishing school by her parents, who are desperate for her to acquire some polish. I want to do this because I want to prove to my old man that I can be a lady. Well, I don't like her accent. It's so South London. It cuts you to the ground. My God. I don't think you could ever take the South London girl out of me, but maybe you could put a bit of lady in me. Just do what you got to do. I don't care. I can't, I can't really say that. No, you just got to do it. <laughs> By now, the ladettes are used to wearing twin sets, court shoes and A-line skirts. But this makeover is a radical change to their identity. I feel like bloody mad mud. I've got a wig on. It's disgusting. It's making the piece. They can't, seriously. Do you know what I mean? This is just not right. It's being a lady and it's making it like this stupid old granny and I don't want it. <laughs> the makeover is revealing an unexpected streak of vulnerability in these brash young women. The best way to do it is obviously you get rid of some of the length. I'm not, I'd stay long, I'm telling you that now. It's, I'm not, not being rude but it is stay long. This is my hair, this is my life. Jessica Upton has come to finishing school to try and throw off her cheap brassy image. Over the last two weeks, she's severely tried the patience of the staff. Mate, my personality's gone out the window with my blue hair, my nose ring and my tattoos. Why are we even beginning to change it then, if you were quite happy with the way it was before? You tell me. I feel sick. I feel physically sick. Listen to me. I've been trying to say this, I know, I know. and it's really important. Where are you? What are you doing? I know. Here. I know. If you want to be, if you want to be 
you know, where you're from, like, hang out, go to clubs and do that and be all trendy, then we'll cut it trendy, but what's the point in that? I'm still 22. I know you are. Not 50. But classic... Is granny. Classic is granny, that's what I know. Hello, Rachel. Hello. Come and sit down. News of Rachel's outburst has reached Jean Broke Smith, and she's been summoned to the principal's office. I think you look fantastic. Do you? It, it looks softer and it looks certainly more the way that I wanted you to be. Okay. Because the other way was very brassy. They just took away me today. Oh, the I think you're going to be a far better me. That's what I'm, but to me, the blonde me, the, the hair, that was me. Mm. And then taking that away was just emotional. We're going to make a lady of you. But in some cases, the transformation is remarkable. None more so than for gas fitter Michelle. Fantastic! Wow! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh, she looks better! Fantastic! I've got one of them bands now with a feather to come out for the Friday. <laughs> I tell you, it, I, I can't believe I'm looking at the same people no, when they walked fantastic. into the hall. Lovely. I cannot believe it. You are completely and utterly different. Mm. All you do is just don't open your mouth yet. Yeah. <laughs> now do it with a B. The girls are expected to wear bone props at all times and to practice elocution for at least 10 minutes every day. But Kate Forrester doesn't think there's been enough progress and this week she decides to get tough. Hey, pa. Not good. There hasn't been practice, has there? You couldn't find your way around there at all. Mimi. That was Mimi. I haven't practiced, I'll no, admit it. I'm afraid it's a £20 fine for not doing homework. Let's move on. We'll start with you, Claire. Let's start with the no. 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 Hayley? Yes. Well done. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yes. No one finds it harder than Hayley. The Cockney, who works as a PA, was nominated for the finishing school by her boss, specifically because of her strong accent and foul mouth. I was brought up in the East End at 8 Mile 40. <laughs> no, but we're turning you we're into a lady. This was the biggest hurdle of all, I tell you. <laughs> I'll tell you. I'll tell you. But at least Hayley has the right attitude, unlike Jessica, who objects to wearing her bone prop. No, no, keep it, keep it on the string. I'll put it back on the string afterwards. No, I should keep it on, honestly, because otherwise you're going to have to keep putting the thing down. And it's choking me. No, put so it round your neck. I'll throw off the top problem. You won't. Put it round your neck. <laughs> Jessica, fine. Not enough progress made. Well, we haven't got that. To get it. I'd just like to say that we haven't got five minutes to even have a shower. Oh, you poor little hard done by creatures. Do you want to manage to last the course or not? Don't take it personally. <sighs> Come on, we're not coming. Jess, I know it's hard. I, I know. Can't get yes, it. you can. Come on. Because we're going to do it. Okay, can I just go and warm my face, please? Two minutes. Go on. Deep breath. Go on now. Deep breath. Shh, shh, shh. Right, Mimi. Let's see him. Go. Okay. We've just been suppressed, suppressed, suppressed. Now, Jess was either going to floor her yeah. or cry. I thought I'm either going to scream at her. Yeah, she keeps going, shush, 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 shush. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to f cry. The only go way we express ourselves is through swearing and shouting. <laughs> and we're not allowed to do that because exactly. it costs you money. Exactly. <laughs> I'm 20 quid down. <laughs> and then I got no f money. No, What's going me, on? Me. Bollocks. Jessica has been summoned to see Jean Broke Smith. Hello. Come in. The principal has heard about her behaviour in class, but is pleased with Jessica's new look. Now you've got a, a softer, more feminine hairstyles, you know, 
more of a ladylike hairstyle. Are you going to be a different you? I am going to be a different me. Tell me. I don't know. It seems like everyone said I'm more approachable now with yes. lighter hair because it lightens up. Yes, well, you were very <gasps> like this at first, weren't you? Shocking. <laughs> I just think you look totally different now. <laughs> I re I'm really pleased because I want to see a softer you. Are you, up? you really are up for this one. To curry favour with the principal, Jessica is prepared to go even further. <gasps> Gather round, girls. This is the passing of the blue Ladette. <laughs> she has agreed to a ritualistic burning of her hair extension. Right, it's a prayer for the blue Ladette. Oh my goodness. Oh no! Well done, you. I'm really proud of you doing that. Because that's quite something. I know you feel quite sensitive about it. That's my rebellious streak. Just I got know that's shoes. your rebellious streak. <laughs> What we're going to talk about is sexual etiquette. First of all, I want to know how many of you are in a relationship? Great. Zero. Not one of you. You're going to a party. Tell me how you feel you should behave. You're going there with an intention of having a good time, aren't you? Pulling. Claire has plenty of experience of that. The amateur pole dancer has been sent to finishing school by her parents, who are desperate for her binge drinking and promiscuity to end. When you say pulling, you mean you're going to find somebody and... Chat them up and... And chat them up mm -hmm. and... Snog them. And snog them. Take them home. <laughs> and tell me something, does that work? No, it doesn't. No, OK. Does anybody else agree with that way of behaving? Usually I, I, I end up wearing beer goggles and <laughs> find men completely attractive. What's a beer goggle? Drunk. Drunk. After a few drinks, April's personality is unrecognisable. The nurse turns into a wild, irresponsible exhibitionist. Why do you do that? What are you trying to achieve? I have no idea. <laughs> it's a question of putting a value on yourself. And if you make yourself sheep, then men are going to take advantage of it. They're going to love it, absolutely. But they're not going to call again. I totally agree with what you're saying, but I just wanted to make like, me going pinch a boat's bum is just harmless fun. Why don't you like me saying it cheapens you? No, because it just, because we're not cheap. Excuse me, if you go up to a guy and you pinch his bum, that's cheap. So you've Listen, never done that? You've never done that? Ever, ever, ever? No. <gasps> oh, never, ever. <laughs> <I've> never <lived. laughs> if you take it very, very slowly, it makes that man more and more interested. And all the time it is building up energy. What does happen eventually is that energy will explode. And it will explode when the time is right. And if you have ever tried that, I have to tell you it's the best sex you could ever have in your life. <laughs> I've acted a complete and utter tart slapper, and all I've got back is being treated like one. And that's when I just thought, you know, Claire, man, you've got to sort it out. And a lot of what she said has really inspired me to go, actually, yeah, well, you know, what the hell was I doing? I just thought, you know, come on, Claire, time for a change. Because if you carry on the way you're going, you're never going to get a nice man. Never, ever. With the Country House weekend approaching, the girls need something special to wear. And the staff have arranged an outing to a dress shop. Oh, it's too white. <laughs> I'm going to run down to get it. Oh, anyway, too dark and dark, isn't it? Like a big meringue. <laughs> They've been instructed to select classically elegant evening dresses to match their new hairstyles. Oh my god! Yes. It's the bap situation again. I can't get these sorted out. This is my personality going crazy. No, you've got me. It's a black tie dinner though, it's isn't it? Dinner it's not black tie dinner. No, they'll say no, that you're that not adhering thing. to the rules. Here's me boobs gone. But some of the ladettes are still finding it hard to come to terms with their new image. We can get me this, can we? Yeah, 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 yeah. Put the chest hey. 
Yeah. You have got to get that done. Yeah. You have got to get that yeah. just to scare the lion out of Miss Butch I just be like, I've got my nervous. contact dress, it's black. <laughs> <laughs> she would actually have a heart attack. I do actually believe. I like it. I do really like it. I'm going with it. Going with it, definitely. Will it fit on top? If I just have my bra and chicken fillets in it, it'd be even better. Back at Eggleston Hall, Claire feels confident enough in her choice of dress to play a practical joke on the principal. And, um, very... Mrs. Brope Smith, sorry yes. to interrupt. I've got my outfit on, and bear in mind that none of the dresses properly fitted me. Fine. I'll be out in about two seconds. Do you want to go in the common room? Oh, my goodness me. <laughs> You're not really wearing that. <laughs> You're not. No, I'm not. It's just you just are saying. dreadful. I don't know. Well, it would saying. certainly make an indelible impression. Yeah. The boots are not exactly green wellies. No. It's just not really right for the no. country. Right. The dress fitting has revealed another thing about the girls' clothes that needs to be sorted out. <laughs> Kenton from Rigby and Pella used to lecture at Lucy Clayton's finishing school. She's come here to overhaul the Ladette's underwear. They're hanging out, aren't they? Once gravity calls, that is it. Can you, can you come out, please? That is super. How does that feel? Could you have a look at yourself, please? I like that. That's pretty. Look at her. Isn't that... Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> Always wear an underwear bra, grab what you've got and bring it to the front, because some of you haven't got that much. I'm staggered. What? The girls are beginning to realise that dressing like ladies needn't mean looking like frumps. This is so sexy. This because bra... Because you my nipples. <laughs> do, do you want the truth? If she doesn't buy this bra, I'm going to commit suicide. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> God. Is this a face B? No. This is a 34C. Oh, I'm a C. Bring it on. <laughs> I like this game. Five, six, seven. Preparing for the weekend isn't the only challenge faced by the Ladettes. It will be great. You can see it's got lovely lines, that, can't you? My little Lessons head. continue throughout the week, and the girls must show progress in all subjects if they are to avoid expulsion and the curriculum is becoming increasingly difficult. So this is what we're aiming for by the end of today's lesson, to be at this sort of stage. So it really will take the two inches off your waist, push you all up a little bit and give you some sort of um, super duper bust line. And... But it's classic cookery with Rosemary Schrager that presents the biggest hurdle. I'm going to show you what to do. Oh, oh no! no. no. He's still alive. Please don't stroke him. He's alive. Now, what I'm going to do is, I'm now going to kill him off because we have to do it quickly. And I'm going to tell you exactly where to do it. OK, Claire, come on, will you look? We must do I'm this. not going to look. I'm sorry, but I'm not. Last week was enough for me. I'm not going to do that. And I mean it. I can't kill things. I'm sorry, but I'm not doing that. I'm sorry. Well, this has to be done, Claire. And I can't do it. I'm sorry. Come on, Claire, turn round. Come on. You can close your eyes. Just turn round and close your eyes. You've literally got to take your knife. You've got to put it into the cross like this. And you've got to go down very quickly. Oh. Okay. Right, I'm now going to put it straight into the boiling water. It's rolling, boiling. Now, I'm just going to get the others out now. We've never killed anything in our life, and I don't think we were about to start now. Oh, I can't do this. Are they dead? Are they dead? Oh, you oh, yeah. oh. I knew it! I knew Well, Claire, I... <laughs> but the practical joke has a purpose. The Ladettes are so relieved they won't have to kill the lobsters that cutting them up will be easy. You're going to learn how to dress a lobster. First, you bang it on the top. That's your job for now. So off you do. OK, Claire, let's go for it. In the middle. That's it. Well done. That's it. Keep going. 
I honestly thought I was going to pass out and walk out the class. Oh, I thought, I can't do this. I really can't do this. But then again, Miss Schrager helped me get through it and overcome it. She has come on leaps and bounds as a person. When she came through the door, I really didn't think she would last a week. There was something almost raw with her. A bit like taking the lobster from sauce. We were taking her from sauce. <laughs> and transforming her into something, a, a sort of swan, which is incredible. I've proven myself that I can do it, but it took balls of steel, big balls of steel. OK, girls, now, when you arrive at the dining room, there is going to be a table plan. Look at the table plan. It's Thursday night, and the girls have one last vital class with Liz Brewer before the country house weekend. Now, the first thing you do when you sit down, do you know what it is? Napkin. Napkin. Tomorrow evening, the girls will be expected to negotiate their way through a minefield of etiquette. How would you eat your bread? I understood. OK, and what would you do? I'd do the same, but I have a feeling that for some unknown reason... You no, need to know Jessica, I want you to tell me, not try and think, how am I going to get the right answer here? I want no, you to I tell me, what, what would you do? I'd use my hands. OK, what you do not do is cut it. You take a roll, you break it. You don't cut it. But bread rolls will be the least of their problems. The menu will include delicacies, and Jessica only eats chicken, beef or chips. So tonight, Jessica, you are going to just try a little bit. I'm sorry, but I've done it. If you don't, I have to tell you, you're insulting your hostess. Cut it. If you don't, if you really can't eat it, but you haven't even tried it, if you really no. can't eat it, take it off and eat the vegetables underneath I don't it. Eat vegetables. Very well, Jessica, so you're refusing to eat. What is a loyal toast? A loyal toast is loyalty <laughs> to the reigning monarch. Okay? So, who do you think it is? I don't you know. know. You don't know who you don't know who the king or queen of this country is? Uh Dobby Mother. She's dead. Oh god, <laughs> no, at all. No, I it don't watch the news. news I don't read the paper, I don't watch the news. I've got enough okay. comments in my life. So Jessica doesn't know we have a Queen Elizabeth <laughs> in this country. I thought Jessica behaved appallingly. She was quite determined she was not going to try. And because of that, I mean, I put a big black mark against her. Her say goes at the end of the day, and if she's automatically got a problem with me, guaranteed I'm booted out on Saturday. Yes, of course I want to stay. I don't want to go home a failure, thank you. I want to prove my point. I've come here to be a lady, and I will be one, whether she likes it or not. The Country House Weekend is taking place at a stately home in the North Yorkshire Dales. When the Ladettes arrive late on Friday afternoon, Sir John and Lady Ropner, their hosts, are there to greet them. Hello. Hello. Lovely to meet you, Sir John. Lovely to meet you. Rachel. The girls have come to the party with Liz Brewer, who will be assessing their performance at each stage. But they will also be under observation from below stairs. The butler and maid are under instructions to report back on any misdemeanours. Thank you. On you go, up the stairs. Over the next 24 hours, everything they've learned about etiquette will be put to the test. Me and you are going to get lost, kid. Yes, I think we are. Yes, we're going to the round room. Oh, my goodness. It's bigger than my flags. Right, must hang dress up straight no, away. No, no, you'll maybe come up and empty your bags. Oh, right. Just leave your bags, yes. Oh, OK. The girls have been told not to help the staff and not to tip them until the weekend is over. Should we do that? Come on. Do we need to do that? I don't know. What do we... <laughs> do you want us to do that? Oh, it's OK. Thank you. It's OK. Thanks. Thank you. But there's worse to come. Liz Brewer has decided to spot Hi, check Hayley. Hayley and Jessica's suitcase. Is this how it was? Yeah. <laughs> this is disgraceful. Inside out? Yeah, that was mostly the tops were all inside out. I wonder if they've done this deliberately. I mean, this is ridiculous. What a mess. 
And of course, there are two girls packed together, and you've got to sort out whose yeah. is who, and they're not even separated. I think this is disgraceful. It's a bit <laughs> Meanwhile, the eligible bachelors are being shown to their rooms in the adjacent wing. There's a pheasant. Did you bring your... Yeah, I actually bring my 12 ball quick. <laughs> I'll unzip the case, Jude. These gentlemen have met the ladettes on two previous occasions, but never spent the night under the same roof. I think a lot of people have quite a soft spot for Rachel. Um, she was serving, yeah, she was serving me at supper last time, and uh, I don't know. A lot of the guys seem to be talking about her. She's a really lovely girl. I think I think a very dry sense of humour. Uh, so it could be, it could be a lot of fun. I'm sure there'd be sort of a bit of naughtiness after the lights out with the girls. So I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I think I'm ready. At 8 o'clock, the guests will meet for a champagne reception in the ballroom. And this will be the first big test for the ladettes. Yeah. They must look completely at home in this grand environment, impeccably groomed with the poise of debutantes. Yeah. If the bugs at work could see me now. <laughs> no one's going to believe this is me. Oh, until I open my mouth, of course. <laughs> <laughs> the transformation of Michelle has certainly been remarkable, but she has had doubts about the motives of the eligible bachelors. I think what worries me is, apart from my bats falling out of this dress, is um, the fact that they think this is one huge game and that we're their bit of rough. And, you know, you can go home and it's like, yeah, you know, I met this bird, you know, rough as fuck and whatever and done her. And I, I would hate for any of the girls, for that to happen to any of the girls. The only person I want to be a bit of rough for is someone who I want to be a bit of rough for. No other bastard. We're not a bit of rough, all right? <laughs> Last week, Jessica took a shine to merchant banker Henry Anderson. I felt it was, I'm afraid, hot water, but not even hot. She's keen to look her best this evening. Jess has got a blatant thing for Henry. She's always had a thing for Henry, but I haven't got, no. No, none of them are none of my type. None at all. So, you know, no corridor creeping for me tonight, I'm afraid. Yeah. Goose feather. <laughs> <laughs> you know I'm going to be spitting these out into my soup. They are so thrilled to be here. For Rachel say, because we've been for a walk with the boys already. And they say, wonderful, have you got your condoms? Oh, she said, well, of course, we don't need those, do we? Because um, we've put a value on ourselves. It's very, very relaxed, very easy, very natural. My eyes are oh, yeah. <laughs> When I use words over two syllables, yeah. it goes over my eyes. Really? Oh, that's all right. Then. Right, I thought that actually Jessica looked, looked very good. I thought that she, the, the red flowing dress, she said very well. I thought she looked stunning. But this was built on in the 1800s. It's silk on the walls, it's a Fortuny fabric. Nothing's been changed. It's what they call faded elegance, like most of us have from. Has it been more difficult to be situation or easier? Only the lessons. The lessons. It'll be more difficult. Yeah. So we, we couldn't cook an egg two weeks ago and now we're called on bleu cookery. Oh, yeah. really, what I've tried to impress upon them is don't just stay with the person you know. Move around, do the wrong, chat to everyone and talk about what they've been doing. Try and practice their conversation. And they're doing splendidly. They really are trying. I mean, it's just thrilling to listen to them. 
Yeah, Tom, I've, I've got a question. If I could interrupt, I want to ask who, who you're going to choose to take in. Is it? I was going to take in Rachel. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Fisticuffs. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can just find out. Yeah. Yeah. We'll yeah. take yeah. this outside, yeah. shall we? Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. That's all right. Jessica, may I escort you through to supper? Oh! 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 Can I take you for supper? The girls have got off to a flying start, but the meal itself presents numerous pitfalls. It's difficult for me to get it under four. Is there any trick to this? As every lady knows, asparagus should be eaten with the fingers, not with a knife and fork. But Rachel has the perspicacity to take her cue from one of the gentlemen. I've always found asparagus tastes so much better if you drench it in butter. Jessica has drawn the short straw. She's seated opposite Lady Ropner, just one along from Liz Brewer, and can only manage a mouthful of asparagus. Did you try it? I did try it. Um, I didn't like it, but I tried. I don't want to offend anyone, though. How did you train to become a, a gas cooker? Um, I left school and I started working for British Gas. How many people are on the course? 66 zero. And we all got split up into groups of about, I think it was about 20. And I was the only girl. Was it residential? Yes. How did that work out? Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Well, an absolute I've been right. man every night for, for two no, months. No, no. So have you been serviced recently? <laughs> <laughs> the next course is consomme. By now, Liz Brewer is becoming irritated by Jessica's refusal to eat. Try another spoon. Just one more. Do I get extra points? I do. The <laughs> <laughs> spoon for Shannon. Big one or a little one? That's a big one. Oh, I didn't listen to what I said last night. Remember what I said about soup? Do apologise. Do apologise. What did you like about it? It's so delicious. It's not that. I mean, by all means, it's been called my cook. But I am, like I said, I'm only used to things in my mouth that I've tasted before. If I taste something different, it's a psychology reaction. I'll spit it back out. Well, I believe you, but millions wouldn't. You know? There's no argument to bring to the table, it's fine, honestly. I've tried it. Well, oh, I'm going to knock her out. By the end of the meal, Jessica has reached the end of her tether. This is going to come to fucking blows, so someone needs to speak to her. I'm not having someone degrade me in front of, in front of ladies and sirs. In front of gentlemen, I'm sorry, no. As the ladies retire to the ballroom, a showdown looks unavoidable. Do you know I've had to put up with this for 48 hours? Just, you've got to leave it. I this, need to speak to Mrs. Yeah. Brooksmith because she is going to fuck me out but it's tomorrow. Not, it's not the time or the place, just leave it. Jessica is determined to have it out, but at the last minute, common sense prevails. Jessica, stop. Head up. For Dead smile on your face. Forget. Stop it. I want to stick to no, 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 no. Don't you dare give her the Death. satisfaction. Oh, I'm not going to stick. Think Claire, let's go. Your oh, man. <laughs> 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 Night, the party has moved through to the billiard room. Right, get the white ball. <laughs> but Sir John's favourite game involves considerably more physical contact than billiards or snooker. Sir John! My goodness! By now, Claire is well and truly plastered, and her conversation is becoming obscene. Everyone fucks. I'm having a fucking problem. Are you ready? I'm ready. For a sake, but yeah. Now, do you all know who you're following? Yes. You can either say boo yourself up and apologise and be and to go look I really did seriously drink too much but I've redeemed myself and prove that you're not or 
You can think, fuck it, and drink yourself into a sheep and just eat the panetta. It's your call. My call is enjoy yourself, darling. But Claire has managed to charm Liz Brewer, and she turns a blind eye to her over-the-top behaviour. Sneaking up behind me I wasn't ready for his sneaking ways I wasn't ready By 2 a.m. the Rockners have gone to bed and love is definitely in the air. No, 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 I'm gonna do this. No, I'm gonna do this because I'm doing this. But Rachel hasn't forgotten what she was taught in her most important etiquette lesson. We're going to come what you are. It's five minutes time. You can trust the guy to cross the table. Very good girl. Man to bed. And we carry you out of your bed. There's no point running away. Skies are perfect blue. You saw me coming. Push it through. Push this bit through. you fell <laughs> You'd better watch your back as I'm sneaking up on you. Oh, I had an amazing evening. Absolutely amazing. And I'd do it all again. <laughs> I think they were absolutely fantastic. I mean, they really shone. They were like diamonds coming through that door. And they loved it. They did themselves absolutely proud. They were wonderful. But as the girls are about to discover, the verdict of their teachers is another matter. At Eggleston Hall Finishing School, six ladettes are preparing for an ordeal. One by one, they must face the staff and persuade them that they are becoming ladies. Rachel! As always, the price of failure is harsh. When these interviews are over, yet another girl will be expelled, and a taxi has already been summoned to take her away. Do you think you could become a lady? Yes, I do. After last night, I definitely do think I can. The girls are judged not only on their performance at the Country House weekend, but on their progress in all lessons throughout the week. Speech here. I have got the speech weekly report in here. Yes. You know you've got no great ability, and actually you just talking to me just then. What difference was there? Not a massive. Absolutely none. It's the one thing that really lets a woman down mm. in society is when she can't hold her drink. Yes. It is taboo. You do not do it. What a shame you let yourself down yet again. Mm. Mm. We're all trying very hard with you. Yeah. And yet, what do we get? Thrown back at us? Failure. <gasps> Just give me the AA number. <laughs> Your bag, when it was unpacked, it was shocking. I get the feeling you actually enjoy being truculent. God. Who the fuck does she think she is? She said that we packed our bags on purpose. She opened my makeup bag, which she's got no right to do. Jessica, I find, is going nowhere. Do you feel that you've improved yourself? I do, actually. Last night I didn't want to get absolutely drunk and make a fool of myself and shout loudly and, you know, flash my knickers or, you know, any of that. I didn't want to do that. It's sort of maybe a bit more refined, hopefully. <laughs> you've gone flat. You've applied to hard work. Again, but she's gone flat. After the teachers have seen all six ladettes, it's time to decide their fate. She can't become a lady. The poor lass, it's just not going to work. She has a good figure, she has a good face, she's blonde. I actually think her self-esteem has changed dramatically, I and I think that's far more, more important than the colour of her hair. By now, the teachers have their favourites, and some sharp differences of opinion have emerged. She's very, very coolly cunning. That doesn't mean that she shouldn't be a lady. She is someone I would have ousted out straight away. What do you think? I think she ought to stay. Well, congratulations on getting as far as the third week. The decisions are becoming harder and harder. Michelle. As always, Michelle has worked hard. 
Last night, her grooming and dress sense were praised, and she charmed her host. So have you been serviced recently? But she still has many unladylike qualities. <laughs> mm, you've got a long way to go still. A really long way. But you have improved tremendously, and I think you want to be a lady. And I think you want to change your life. You can stay. All right? Now, Hayley. Hayley has also tried hard. I was brought up in the East End, it ain't my fault, is it? <laughs> and she charmed Lady Ropner at the party. Thank you very much. Fantastic dresses. But Jean Broke Smith has never warmed to her. You've got a long way to go in life, actually. We know about the speech. You have got to now take on board that we've got to hear vowels, etc., rather than a, a, a milly jilly of nothing. We are allowing you to stay a little bit longer. Claire. Last night, Claire got totally plastered, and her behaviour was out of control. Sorry. Hello, Frank. I love a but once again, she's impressed Rosemary Schrager. That's it, well done. That's it. Keep going. You know what I feel and the others about your alcohol. Yes. It's really ruining a lot of your chances here. <clears throat> but I particularly like your hair. At this point in time, you can stay. All right? <laughs> I'm going to faint. <laughs> but you know, you know, don't take that as if it's easy no, peasy. No, 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 I'm going to cry because I thought I was... I'm... Jessica. Jessica has had a bad week. She fell foul of Kate Forrester and Liz Brewer. Last night, an ugly showdown was only avoided after the others intervened. Well, I believe you, but millions wouldn't. She's a bitch. She needs to be sorted out. But Jean Broke Smith has not seen this side of her character and is delighted with her new hairstyle. I like you, I think you're great, but I think you are an attention seeker. But I don't think I'm doing it. You don't know you're doing it. I don't it. know. You really don't. But I think you've got a nice little personality there. So you can stay. I'm going to cry too. <laughs> I don't mind, you can all cry. <laughs> April appears to have made real progress this week. She looked great at the party, and Sir John took a noticeable shine to her. <laughs> Sir John! Sir John! <laughs> My goodness! But she's made one big mistake. She's failed to curry favour with any of the staff, who've distrusted her ever since her outburst in the village two weeks ago. Yeah, fuck it, poor old bastard! <laughs> you started here with an advantage, because you're a very pretty lady, you've got a fantastic figure. Strangely enough, <laughs> you've travelled this far, but you seem to have died on a somewhere along the line. I'm afraid we're going to have to invite you to leave. It's fine, it's fine. You didn't go far enough. All right. Okay. Rachel. This week, Rachel got off to a bad start. <laughs> Can I tell you for supper? But last night, she was a hit with one of the bachelors and remembered what she was taught in her sexual etiquette lesson. But Jean Broke Smith hasn't forgotten her ingratitude about her haircut. You're still very immature. You know that. OK. You are. And I hope in your future life, whatever you do, I'm saying that in your future life, you've got to continue with this word sophisticated over your head. But you have improved. I think your hair looks fantastic now. Thank you. We're going to allow you to stay a bit longer. Oh, my God. <laughs> <You're> sorry. <laughs> Mr. Shaker, over to you. You have got precisely 20 minutes, all right? 15 minutes to pack and five minutes to say goodbye. <coughs> Do you think April was upset, really? Yes. Upset? You? Oh, yes. Because of the oh, way she absolutely. reacted. Mm. The fact that she said, oh, that's fine. Mm -hmm. I think she was definitely fighting tears. Okay. Because you obviously have got their favourites, which is it's fine. I don't have a problem with that at all. And I don't mind that again to be quite honest either because it's just it's all too um it's all it's quite hard work being here and uh and it's you know they say one thing they say oh you want we want you to be a lady and then i i think i'm quite good at being a lady but they obviously excuse me don't i feel yeah. like i'm at my wick's end so i really do it is everyone is I'm just gonna, i will i'm tonight. gonna explode soon but hey ho another week of torture and pain <laughs> yeah. yeah all good 
Why are you all stood there shaking your heads? We're all shocked that it's you. Why are you shocked? Because we didn't... They want personality. They want challenges. Do you know what I mean? You're too they much of a lady already. Well, there you go. <laughs> Do I see any tears or anything? Oh, she's, she's, she's smiling. She's smiling. She's totally together. Mm. She's she's a tough cookie. You know? I think she is. Take care. Take care. Well done. Nice one, brother.